Hey there, so I have played Flintlock The Siege of Dawn and this is my honest opinion about it. I did want to make a review at first but uh, the game just boils down to two issues and a full-on review is just not gonna be feasible so I did finish the game, I did beat all of the bosses and got all of the equipment and stuff like that so here's my honest opinion about Flintlock The Siege of Dawn. If you do like the video, please subscribe, like, comment down below what you think about the game, if you played it, if you plan on playing it. And uh, yeah, um, starting with a controversial statement. This game is not Forspoken 2, mainly because the main character of Nor Vanek that we play as is extremely bland. She has absolutely no personality. And while, you know, the devs for uh, Forspoken went into one extreme, this one goes into the other, where you just don't care about her goals or whatever she does, because she is just so bland. And that is a topic that will come out a lot about this game, because that's just what it is. The game is extremely bland in its environments, in its characters, even in its combat and some other stuff like equipment. Everything is just bland. It is played very very safe but at the other end the game doesn't know what it wants to be does it want to be a souls like does it want to be an action rpg or just an adventure i don't know because it you just can't describe this game it did market itself a little bit like a souls like and if you will buy this game and go into it expecting a souls like you will be very very disappointed because it just isn't there is a lot of ideas here there is a lot of good ideas here they are not executed extremely well or well at all at some points and it just doesn't mash well together with what the devs wanted to do and it seems like they didn't know what to do actually it seems like they just threw in ideas and then said you know what let's try to find the middle road between all of them and see what happens and what happens is it's a game with no real sense of direction um i will start with combat because that's the main thing you are going to do throughout the game you will try to fight the enemies and what i found the early combat and the mid game combat is very very non-responsive um you will hit the enemies and they will not stagger until you get the hammer or skill up a little bit more they will just you know walk your attacks off and it will make you think that you're not doing anything which you might as well would because you don't get any feedback you don't get any response i do realize that they wanted you to rely on parry and the gunshot for the red attacks but even that gives you very very little feel for example parry while you know that you did a parry you will not get a lot of feedback from it there is not a lot of weight to it it's like everything is made out of paper your hits are made out of paper theirs are too and this is a problem because a combat has to be tight, it has to have some feedback for you to know what uh, you're going to do. So this is uh, in a very, very stark contrast with the souls like who uh, have to have that. You need to know what you're doing. And in this game, you many times will not know what you're doing. And this game, I will say it was not designed for you to take on multiple enemies, at least not to the late game when you become stronger and you max out your weapons then you know you will cut through normal enemies yeah sure but at the beginning into the mid game when you're forced into those battles you will have to strategize even though the game wants you to be aggressive because when you uh, counter the red attack with your handgun you use a black powder charge and in order to get it back you have to hit the enemy with melee, I believe it's three times for one charge. So you will have to do that because the red attacks, while they can be dodged, and I did it quite successfully many times, the best thing to do is to just shoot the enemy and get in a few hits. 
uh, like that but with multiple enemies at the beginning and all the way through the mid game you will have a problem so that's another thing uh, the enemy placing isn't as good as it could be uh, you will run through a lot of places that uh, nothing is there and then all of a sudden you will have a group of enemies surrounding you uh, so this is an area they could improve a lot on and this is the area that shows exactly uh, the undecisiveness of the developers that is very very obvious here um, second thing is the platforming when you have to jump yourself and not rely on Enki's, uh, so Enki is a god of death who is helping you to get through all of this. Uh, when you don't rely on his uh, teleport ability, that you can uh, teleport through different points that he makes. I think they're called rift triangles. Uh, when you have to jump yourself, you will find yourself in a lot of trouble a lot of the time. Because... It happened a lot of the times that I did jump and uh, Nor was kind of, you know, already start started to fall down and I thought, okay, I will not make that jump, I have to double jump here and it was a wrong decision because the distance that you see is very hard to calculate and if, you know, your character stops falling, you think, okay, they will not catch the ledge. Of course, you will try to double or triple jump, uh, which you have an option of here. And that will be too much and she will not grab onto the ledge for some reason. So you have to choose your uh, jumps very, very carefully. And sometimes it's actually pixel perfect. And that, you know, just makes for more uh, confusion. So I would like the jumps to be a little bit more uh, visually... Uh, representative of what what you're doing not just you know okay she's falling down so I'll try to double jump but no that's not correct so fall down and die and try again so um, this is a problem uh, which you can see here uh, I made it now but before I don't think I did and I think I actually came to the same place and she just didn't grab onto the ledge so that's one other problem with the game. Um, another thing, speaking about blandness again, is the world design, which is again very, very safe. I'm not saying that the game looks bad, because it doesn't. Uh, actually, it fits very well with the story and where you're going, but it just isn't exciting and doesn't entice you to explore uh, more around you. It doesn't entice you to explore the world and find things for yourself because the areas that you're in, again, look very, very samey, very bland, very safe. And you will just be like, okay, why do I want to explore this except for, you know, the shrines that gives you more life and maybe some other equipment? Uh, in games like Elden Ring, for example, and uh, other Souls likes, even the Lies of P, you will see the world and you will be like, okay, I want to see what's happening here. I want to see what's around the corner. And here you will just not have that. Um, there's one thing I noticed because I, when I was searching for the soundtrack for the game, I came up uh, on the other reviews of the game and I noticed something very interesting so you see the weapon i'm using here it's this fire axe that you find quite early in the game i saw everyone using the same weapons the same loadout even with the helmets later on i found the warlock's helmet which uh, if you use enki's ability kind of uh, does the ex explosion after the fourth time in succession even that was the same so there's not much variety uh, in the builds there is no builds basically because you do choose the skills from magic black powder and melee and you use your uh, i'm gonna call them souls for the lack of the better word uh, you use those to level up but it seems that in the uh, department of weapon variety and which you know do 
come in with the build variety, there isn't any. Because everyone was just using the same thing. The Fire Axe is by far the best one. It does this uh, little damage over time with the fire and when you upgrade it, it's extremely strong because you can actually hit the enemy and then kind of walk away and let the dot do its thing and then just die. Like this one here, for example, if you saw the last hit, his health went down pretty, pretty good. And then when they're armored enemies and your fire axe doesn't do as much damage, you will just use the hammer. And that's all you basically need from the melee weapons department is the hammer for the armored enemies and then the fire axe for everything else that's not armored or if you do strip the armor from the enemy which you can do then just use the fire axe and all of the other melee weapons are basically not needed now you do have your sidearm which is good for countering when the red attack comes those are also different i just use a norse pistol because it's the best balance between damage and how many charges you get and then you have your ranged weapon which is a rifle you get some uh, grenade launcher and stuff like that you can use all of those they all have separate charges and that's basically it uh, ranged combat isn't too bad because you can do uh, you can remove some of the unarmored enemies pretty quickly but it doesn't add too much to the game once the combat starts you will not use your ranged weapon because you have to reload it so you will just rely on your handgun and your uh, weapon of choice and then we come to the bosses what to say about the bosses is when you get to a real boss fight it's done really really well so when you slay the gods I believe there's four gods uh, there's Inaya, Ramuha, the dude I name I forgot and then there's the final boss Uru which you fight twice at the end those are done really really good and the design of them is also probably the best content in the game so I enjoyed that I, I really did I enjoyed fighting the bosses uh, because they were done really well and I wish there were more of them but then again it's just for real bosses I'm not counting the hordes as you see here this is a pack I, I don't count this as a boss it does have the boss bar but this isn't a boss fight this is just a fight you know against multiple enemies and then if you go to hamlets which you have to uh, free and if you free the hamlet you get uh, more healing you get a healing flask and you can buy uh, equipment not not equipment you can buy new outfits that do nothing it's just fashion which is okay but the bosses of those places are just elite enemies there are the same enemies that you fight uh, in open world, just a little bit stronger, a little bit more armored. So I don't count that as a boss fight, because it's not. Uh, it's like you would fight a soldier of Godric many, many times. It just wouldn't be a boss fight, right? Even if, if he would be a little bit stronger. Uh, so I wish there were more boss fights, because those... Are done really well and I have to give points to the game here but again if you go into this game expecting a souls like where you will fight bosses and try to overcome their you know abilities patterns and uh, their difficulty this just isn't a game for you and I can't recommend it because if you like action RPGs you will not be satisfied with the souls like mechanics that it has which are implemented not as well as they could be but if you like souls like on the other hand you will be extremely disappointed because this isn't it and I can see that the developer really tried to make a good game they put a lot of effort in uh, the visuals and the bosses but they just missed the mark and there's always something missing 
when you play Flintlock the Siege of Dawn and that is a problem because all of the footage that you see here is from the first area and this is the first boss but the reason I didn't film any other areas is was because I just wanted to finish the game so I can see uh, the whole picture and if it would get better I would put it in and I would be happy to say hey you know what this game is great grab it try it and you know enjoy it but I just can't do that because I want this channel to have honest opinions and not just go with the flow for example if a game is not worth your time and money i will not say it is in if you did buy the game and you do enjoy flint lock that's good that's great but i think that majority of people who are looking for um action rpg or a souls like will enjoy some other games much much more than flintlock and they should spend their money on that game even though I, I i really wanted the game to be successful and good because we don't get many new ips these days or we get is like sequels and remasters and reboots or whatever and we don't get many new games now what went wrong here I'm not going to talk about the controversy surrounding the game because for the gameplay and for the fun experience that just isn't important and I'm focusing on that. What I think went wrong here that it was that the developer first of all they tried to play too safe and they didn't take any risks at all regarding the gameplay and then at the other hand, they try to mash in too many uh, different genres and all of that together just doesn't fit. I think they should have spent more time refining the direction of the game because right now it doesn't have any direction. And while there are the elements and they, there are the foundations for the game to actually not be bad and be worth buying, they are there, but they never come to fruition. And I think they should take more time to see which direction to go in, take out the things that don't, don't fit, and maybe not even replace them, just go with what works. Because right now, it just doesn't. And it doesn't help that there's... A very, very, very bland story, bland characters, except for Enki, the Death God, which is written really well, and I like that one. But all of the others are just there. Even the main character of Nor feels more like a side character to Enki than she does as a real main character. Even though they try to build up the relationship, I cared more for that little fox thing than I did for the main character, which is a problem. So, what I would suggest is next time, choose a direction and take a little bit more risk with the characters. I do realize that there was controversy surrounding the characters, but you can write your characters much, much better than this and make them have some personality and not just be like a ficus in an office you don't care about uh, so at the end i will give some recommendations if you do uh, like <laughs> these kind of games but it's very hard to do for this one because it's uh you know so wide so i will go with um two souls likes first if you like Souls-like, I would uh, suggest Neo 2 as one of those. And the second one would be The Lies of P, which is an exceptionally good Souls-like. And everyone should play it. If you like more of the RPG stuff, maybe go with uh, V Rising is the good one here. Maybe go with Ghost of Tsushima, even Enshrouded. And then two curveballs here which are both 2d games 
uh, maybe try out the last faith which is a bloodborne like 2d pixel metroidvania which also have has rivers of blood so you'll enjoy that one and for the last one i would say blasphemous or blasphemous 2 if you want to find bosses with names like um justiciar the great orator of forgotten library of blessings and holy water <laughs> it does have names like this but it's really really good so at this point i can't recommend you to spend your money on flintlock spend it some other way maybe take your significant other out to dinner but right now flintlock the siege of dawn just isn't worth it so this was my opinion if you liked uh, the video subscribe if you didn't like it don't and i'll see you next time